I left the light on. I can't see it now. There's all these scary thoughts in my head. In my past. The only way to deal with it is... So, here I am. There's my new lamp. My witch's broom for Halloween. Looks cool. I use it actually on the floor. It's a good broom to sweep with. And that there is my golden chair that I made from the rare sun positioning. It still lights up like a light bulb with the slightest light. So you can imagine when the sun hits it. Oh, I'm getting hiccups. When the sun hits it. That's my little humidifier. What off eBay? Um. And my wonderful trip to America. Met a guy from America in Australia. And uh, right after I was... And psychic for some unknown reason. Psychic and um, missing. Uh, as in, um, not missing, but missing. Um, the uh, people that uh, I have memories of do not remember me. They remember someone else in my place, but not me. And uh, I remember the, them as if we, uh, as if I had uh, forgetful disease again in my teeth and uh, were told to relive different life or something in a different, or just I'm not sure what's going on with these Australians and their tests they do with psychic research. But um, the mix-up was that um, I remembered the people after I had forgotten many um, times things, uh, missing time or whatever you would call it, where they only remember someone else what I have memories of. They have memories of me, but not much of it. And um, I was a newcomer. To me, I thought they were my friends. But I was a newcomer. To me, I thought I knew them for a while. But no, they only knew me for a short time, apparently. And I then became psychic with holes in my teeth, with flaps covering up, with a forgetful disease going straight to the brain. I would have forgotten anything. Anybody could have told me anything. Um, I met a guy that was in um, Townsville, Queensland. I met a guy from America and I really, really liked him a lot. And I always thought highly of Americans because of, you know, them making movies and things like that. They just seemed really cool. So I arranged to save money, very little money I had, but um, someone paid for my ticket and uh, they were anonymous and I went to, I arranged with Billy to meet him in Hawaii where he was stationed. So I got there and um, he 
he didn't turn up till evening before dark and he apologised and all that stuff and we went to his army motel where we were supposed to go to his house he was renting but he gave it to other people because he's an idiot weak anyone could swing a story to him and he'd fall for it he was too kind and um, I stayed in the army motel until they complained Americans complain about everything and uh, so Billy left the army sent me to his family's house while he's leaving the army um, so when I got there they took my passport and said they'll keep it safe which was strange and I started to feel funny like every time I had something to drink or eat I started to feel horny and they said it's okay to prostitute we don't mind and all that stuff they were, you know saying it's okay but I I'm the one that does not like that sort of thing I didn't go there to prostitute. I went there to see Billy. He still hadn't arrived yet. And I'm still going through these strange things like I've been spiked. Never had that feeling in Australia before. Till I got back after a few years. Um, things started to get heavy with the a couple of um, Australians that like to spike girls' drinks. Um, which I knew, by then I knew the feeling, but while I'm in America still, Billy got uh, back and everything was fine when he was there until I didn't know what was going on. I was new in America. I didn't know anything. I couldn't get back to Hawaii to leave to get back to Australia because they kept my passport so I st ended up staying in America for three years and while I was there um, after Billy came back they started to keep me cold the fan on in the car in winter and it, it snows, it's freezing there. I've never been so cold. Horrible. I hated it. And I tried to get back to Australia and no one would help me. So I was kept that cold when I finally got help. The American and American government and DSS in America and Australian Embassy helped me out back to Australia with my son we had to trick Billy into signing papers so that I could take Chris with me and he signed the papers and off I went and every airport that I stopped at the Australians had to replace the air conditioners to freezing temperatures because I was not used of their air, normal air conditioners they were too hot and I arrived in Sydney in winter freezing cold people were wearing jumpers we were sweating in coats and jumpers it was very warm for me and ever since that, if I, I get very hot very quickly and I end up in an ambulance at the hospital because my body starts shutting down because of the heat. So I stay indoors a lot in summer and it's mainly summer all year round. And I can't leave because my son is grown and he's got a boy himself 
little baby himself. My grandson is absolutely adorable. So I can't really get to cooler place. I can't get to uh, somewhere that, uh, because it's too far for me to travel. If I find, uh, if I have to, uh, down south is the coolest, but not in summer. But it stays cooler longer than up here. So I just stay inside. And that, um, there was other things like phone calls. I listened to them. They, um, they heard one of the, one of the Americans I was there with talking to someone on the phone. They didn't know I was there. And they were saying things like, oh, but we were expecting 30 something grand. When is it coming? We did everything you asked. We did all of that. Kept it cold. And I assume they were talking about me, so I was a t test subject for their pocket. Um, so that's a bit of a horror that I also have to uh, deal with, um, with everything else. So I can't really trust anybody because they look at me with hungry eyes to use for their pockets. Growing up, it, I didn't know these sort of things because if I did, then they wouldn't have been able to use me. Nobody would have. So that's why everybody keeps hush-hush so that they could get away with hurting you and using you for their pocket. At the dentist here, in Rocky, an English British woman was uh, giving me trial drugs. She told me they were different trial drugs for pain relief, which was a lie. I started to shake all over and uh, like having really sick different drugs. She said to me, but I told you that they would do that to you and they make your heart go faster and all this stuff. Horrible. I've never gone back since. I got on YouTube and found out the same thing that I went through. They were paying people in UK to be tested on and they were getting thousands and thousands of dollars and here they were doing it for nothing pocketing the money doing it to elderly and then just keeping the money to themselves so you, I cannot trust anybody the situation is like uh, I don't know if if it's not your body parts they want it's to use you for tests so they can pocket the uh, money, get the um, re results, use you as the results and give the information and get money from it. Um, there was a thing in Australia that you could do that and get paid for it. And I thought, well, wait a minute, nobody gets paid here in Australia for that. Um, they said nobody wanted to do the tests in Australia and get paid for it. So they must have thought, well, we'll just force it on them, call them into the dentist. And they called me in um, about four months ago, to go the, five months ago, to go to the dentist again. And I won't go back there. There is no way I'll go back to Rockhampton Hospital, maybe... dentist or anything because of my um, uh, mental state being scared and not trusting anybody doctors are always knocking on my door trying to get me into the hospital to talk to them and I do not trust them 
I can't go near them. I tell them, no, go away or I'll get a court order to keep you away. And they haven't stopped knocking on my door since. Either people call them or they just come willingly. They said it's because of what I have said to them in messages about getting abused in their hospital. They seem to think I need some sort of counselling, someone to talk to. And I tell them, you know, I can't stand Australians. You, you just make me vomit. I can't have you around me too long. That's my mind and I can't change that. But I'm trying to help myself by talking about it on YouTube, making videos. No one ever watches them. <laughs> And I get it out, out of my system as well. And anybody else it's happened to, it would probably wake them up if they were kept frozen in America because they just want to use us for tests. I would imagine because their people complain about them testing on animals, testing, so they test on humans there, but they can probably complained about that because Americans complain a lot and uh, they're no different to British people that complain and I would imagine that it would be easy to grab Australians that were in and out of homes orphans grown and that would be um, why I don't remember the psychic tests but I turned psychic so uh, bang all of a sudden it was psychic tests and then frozen and then that blue stuff injected in me they just don't stop testing on people it's like oh but we want this we want x-men abilities they think they're going to have some sort of powerful person and they're easier to play with like I could tell them you know you're going to have a mudslide and they can't believe it <laughs> Nobody's having mudslides. It would probably be coincidental because being psychic. I would know that. I was never psychic ever. It used to amaze me. I thought, wow, psychic people must be really, really special and very expensive to um, sit with in a reading. But now it's like pfft, nothing. I'm not, uh, I'm still a bit psychic, but um, it's a different kind of a psychic. I can, um, it's like, not like it used to be anyway, but horrible and scary. And I saw blood everywhere when I was younger and then someone would get bashed and blood would be everywhere. Things like that it was just horror I saw. And now I see beautiful things. I'm over it because I'm free from them. I hope I am. I mean, I still get stalked and things like that. And next door watches me and people, strangers turn up at her house, shaking her hand, saying, oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. And they talk about me. And though that deaf, you know, so that, they, that I came here she's very in the walls a pretty thing um, so she's right next door it's a house split in half so I'm unit one and she's unit two and there's no other units so I can hear pretty well and she's very loud even when she closes the doors I can hear them talking <coughs> and they're forever talking about me you know, um, yesterday she was talking to some stranger about, oh, she just talks on the phone uh, because I was out there videoing my car, what I was going to do, and she raced out to watch. And uh, she always listens and watches me like a, a stalker, creepy. And... Uh, 
and she's talking the same day about to someone about how all I do is talk on the phone. Well, weird. Could be weird. Uh, she could be talking about someone else. I guess she could be, but it's just. Um, other conversations that match up to what i done in the day. Um, so, yeah, strange. Anyway, I'm going to try and get to sleep if I can. <laughs>